Yeah. Yes. All right. Okay. So I am uh, here uh, Tobias Fox, founder and managing director of Newark Science and Sustainability Inc. I'm also a uh, founder and lead facilitator for the Newark Community Food System. And I've asked my colleague, Emilio Panaski, who will introduce himself shortly uh, to join me on this discussion. Uh, and in, what is this discussion? So I want people to understand uh, that um, we are trying to uh, change the paradigm, if you will, of what agriculture looks like in our cities. And uh, we hope this could also inspire uh, people throughout the world, uh, not in just the United States, but wherever they are, uh, who may be struggling with seeing agriculture as a pathway to sustainable living or a pathway to some sustainable uh, lifestyle, uh, whether it be economic and so forth. We're hoping that they can see this, uh, the model that we are uh, creating uh, here in New Jersey, specifically throughout the Newark, New Jersey area. Um, but this is nothing to, uh, unique to Newark. It's happening all over the, the country, but we are hoping that what, we do, what we're doing here can be some type of um, uh, inspiration to others uh, throughout the world. And so I'm going to, um, Stop sharing my screen now. And I also want to acknowledge the uh, Mandela Washington Fellowship Reciprocal Exchange uh, Program and uh, my colleague, Angela, uh, who is um, helping me spread this mission and this work uh, into Uganda. And so I'm going to stop sharing my screen and bring on uh, my colleague, good friend. Uh, Emilio Panaski. Well, actually, let me just throw up the. I thought this was up already, Emilio. Sorry. So uh, no, again, no, no. Let's uh, take a look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I want to, you know, again acknowledge, uh, and I have to acknowledge Mandela Washington Fellowship Reciprocal Exchange uh, for making this uh, project possible. Uh, and also acknowledging my colleague, Angela, for um, collaborating with me to bring this uh, new way of thinking into uh, Africa, specifically Uganda. All right, and so now I can stop sharing my screen and then I'll ask my colleague, uh, Emilio, are you able to share your screen uh, on your end? Uh, maybe hit the um, more. Yes, uh, hello, Tobias. L let me see. I can, uh, I think you have to enable the access. All right, cool. So let's okay. see. Ah, yep, make you a host. All right, so you are now a host. You have the ability to All right, to well, drive. hello everyone. Um, Tobias, thank you so much. Uh, this, is, this is a really cool opportunity. And every time we get an opportunity to talk about what we're doing here in New Jersey and in the United States, it's, it's a great, you know, we learn a lot too because you have to reflect on what you're doing and think about how you're going to describe it to people. And um, so it's a it's a fun opportunity for us. Um, and I guess um, should I should I throw up my slides? Yeah, and then also don't forget to uh, formally introduce yourself. <laughs> oh, of course, of course. Let me start. I'll put my slide up, and then I will do that right away. Let's see here, sharing. Give people a little background. Awesome. And slideshow. All right. Well, um, good afternoon again, everyone. This is uh, Emilio Panashi. I'm a uh, uh, New Jersey native, <laughs> uh, founder of the Urban Agriculture Cooperative. Um, we are a nonprofit uh, organization here in Newark, New Jersey, and we focus on uh, bringing farmers together to have a more local food system where people can um, shop uh, and connect with uh, local growers, small growers. Um, in addition, we try to help build up some of those small growers, helping them get access to grants and opportunities so they can be more entrepreneurial um, and they, they have a market to sell their food right here in the community, uh, especially in communities that really need it because they lack healthy food. 
Um, so we work very closely with uh, Tobias and, um, and and Newark Science Sustainability. Uh, several other organizations in the community as well um, have been uh, instrumental. And um, we're, we're kind of like an ecosystem of different organizations that come together. We all kind of share common beliefs about um, growing our own food as much as possible or, you know, uh, uh, absorbing food from the local region as close as possible to our city, um, from local farmers, and um, and we believe that's a healthy in, uh, environment and healthy economy. Um, I've been doing this work for, gosh, over 12 years now in different forms. Um, I'm a, um, uh, I was trained in, in school in um, urban planning, uh, so that involves uh, like you know, designing of cities and, and uh, systems of cities. I actually didn't know a lot, a whole lot about agriculture when I started. Um, I started uh, my first community garden project here in Newark um, and just kind of fell in love with local food, with growing my own food uh, and this, this idea that we can um, uh, rely more on our, our own local farmers and, and ourselves to provide the healthy food that we need um, and in doing so create some small business. Um, and Tobias, feel free anytime if you want to um, ask me questions or, or stop me. Oh yeah, I will definitely chime in. Just a little bit about uh, our, our organization, because I think it helps to describe a little bit about the topic today, which is, you know, we're, we're in this increasingly uh, urbanized world. Um, and here in the United States, we've had a, a long history now of people leaving um, agriculture and leaving small family farms and doing one of two things. Either they move to cities for uh, education and, and jobs in their urban world, or uh, those that stay in farming uh, tend to consolidate into much larger farms um, to, to uh, be part of the national and global supply chain of you know, uh, very large farming at high volumes of, of produce or milk or uh, wheat, you know, cereal crops like that. And so we haven't had as much of a place for uh, what America used to be when we were first founded, which is, you know, uh, over 90% small farmers, you know, growing for their small communities and regions. Um, but at the same time, we've had a lot of people trying to make an effort to bring back local food. And why? Because it's, it's fresher, it's more nutritious, um, it's small business right in your in your region. You know, it's it's keeping keeping money circulating in your in your economy. Um, it's a healthy use of land. It heals our ecosystem, um, and it it stops our reliance on um, you know food coming in from thousands of miles away in some cases, uh, and, and and creates our own self reliance. And it's something that I definitely urge people to think about all around the world. As as there there's a lot of reasons why. You know, you might be thinking about your future uh, and and a, a job in, in you know in, in technology or in, in a more uh, modern kind of urban setting, but if we lose the ability to sustain ourselves with our own local agriculture and our own local markets, um, you know that knowledge can be lost, and that means we're going to be reliant on food coming to us from stores and from large companies where we we don't have control. Uh, and we also don't have a, a backup plan for, for times like um, of war or famine or fuel shortages, right? Um, so we really need this. We need to retain this local knowledge and, and retain these local food systems. Here you see a picture of a, a farm stand run by um, some students and young people in our community a few years back. And all of the food on the table here was grown within, uh, uh, within 100 miles of, of Newark. Um, some of it in our local gardens, uh, some of it from some small farms that are near us. And, um, you know, we, we really tried as best we could uh, every week to provide, provide food that was grown and, and harvested, you know, just a few days before. It's very different than what we find in our large supermarkets. Um, here's a little bit about our programming. Over the past few years, we've had um, mostly a focus on aggregation, which we call, you know, bringing together multiple farms and then distributing their food all together uh, in different forms. Um, we've done training and reimbursement for uh, people who wanna take farmer training uh, courses. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, and then I'm also gonna to talk today about composting and how to process food waste into healthy soils. Um, because in any urban setting um, or any community really, 
uh, the the uh, the use of food waste as a resource um, cannot be overstated, um, and that's certainly true here in Newark. Um, here's a little bit about our board of directors, um, some of the, the folks that uh, oversee our financial and uh, strategic uh, uh, direction. And so you see here are some photos. Um, we've been uh, um, distributing food from uh, over 20 farmers now uh, through both online ordering um, and, uh, and sometimes uh, delivery direct to people's homes in some cases. Um, you see in the first photo, uh, a lot of food boxed up and packaged um, that is going out to some um, uh, patients at one of the local hospitals. And then you see in the picture below, one of our uh, most famous urban farmers, uh, uh, Kevin and Arellis, um, doing a demonstration of herbs uh, and local foods um, because the education side of what we're doing here in the community and teaching people about uh, the healthy foods to eat, uh, the, med the medicinal foods to eat, um, is just as critical. Uh, in fact, it, it encourages people to, to buy more local food, to grow their own food, um, and to, to be very conscious of their environment. Just a little picture of what our online market looks like when people, uh, people order either retail boxes or wholesale quantities. Let me just go through a little further. Now you see a few more pictures of some of our local farms. Again, some are right here in the city. And some are just in the countryside, just close by. Um, and we've set up a supply chain where um, we have um, a truck uh, that can go out and pick up food uh, once a week. Many of the farmers that are in the rural communities uh, bring, their, bring their products that we order all to the same uh, barn. And we pick up from one barn, uh, about five different farms do that. And then in our urban communities, many, uh, many of the farmers drop off their food or we pick it up and bring it to one central hub, uh, the Greater Newark Conservancy, and we share refrigeration there. Let's go through, here's more of our suppliers. Here's a little breakdown. Uh, this is, I think, 2019 or 2020, so it's a few years old, but you can see that we have uh, tried to minimize the, uh, the miles traveled of our food. And this is a big thing about urban agriculture. I think one of the, one of the key driving things um, how do we uh, make sure that we're getting the freshest food? Well, we need the most local food. Also, how do we make sure that we're cutting down on the use of fossil fuels and trucking in particular? Um, again, uh, growing and, and sourcing locally is the answer. And then lastly, how do we make sure that we're building uh, real jobs and real economy for people? Well, again, local is the key there because we want to make sure that we, we know the farmers we're, we're buying from. We want to make sure that to the extent possible, our consumers in our, in our city are sending their, their dollars, not to big global companies, but right to a farmer down the street so that that person can thrive and keep producing healthy food for us year over year. And so this chart shows that we, we sourced from uh, uh, four farms that were right here in the city. So we counted that as zero miles of transportation. And then we had several others that were um, within 10 to 30 miles, which is, um, you know, just a, a half hour or an hour drive. And then uh, several other farms that were within 100 total miles, uh, about an hour away. Then we also uh, worked on supporting our suppliers. Um, and this means helping to invest in infrastructure. Um, one of the larger farms in the city here at the Hawthorne Avenue Farm. Uh, was able to work with uh, the government, the USDA, um, and get uh, irrigation for their farm. Um, this is also a teaching farm where many people from the community um, can adopt their own small bed and learn to produce food for the first time for their family. Um, and so now we're engaged in a program, and uh, Tobias is a partner in this as well, where we're um, bringing in um, more government money through the USDA um, to support very small growers and getting things like irrigation systems, uh, uh, high tunnels or hoop houses to go over their crops in cold weather, um, uh, native planting to help uh, help the uh, ecosystem and, and pollinators. Um, and all those things can be reimbursed by this government program. I'm gonna stop here and switch slides for a moment. Tobias, do you um, have any questions or anything you want me to answer while I do that? 
No, this has been really enlightening, especially uh, kind of seeing this uh, uh, full picture. Um, and uh, as I was saying earlier in my uh, uh, informal introduction, um, uh, we, we are kind of organically creating this new paradigm of what agriculture looks like um, in, in a local setting. And so uh, I've heard it once um, from someone that you work with or close with in, in Puerto Rico, um, describe it as uh, community uh, farming. And so I've been adapting that language as well. Um, and so I see this as more so as community farming because it is working in a more uh, close niche community environment uh, where um, it becomes, uh, where well, you need the engagement of the people around you uh, to also participate versus when you're in a rural um, environment uh, or the countryside uh, where it is food is more mass produced. Um, you don't really engage with um, people uh, unless it's on really the kind of um, uh, exchange where it's just like a more economic exchange, right? And so it's not a very community development kind of going on, right? So. Uh, so this is cool. So I want to hear more. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to uh, pick up on that point and just add something that I should should have added right in the beginning. Um, you don't you don't have to be a farmer to be working in the food system. Um, I, I'm not a farmer by background. Uh, I, my, my family has some farming in it. Uh, my mom grew up on a, a dairy farm, but it doesn't mean I came to this work um, as a, as someone who's trying to produce food on my own. Now I did start a small community garden project. Uh, I did, you know, uh, I do know how to uh, cultivate some, some local fruits and vegetables. And I certainly enjoy gardening and landscaping, uh, planting uh, uh, things in my own, my own yard and things that I'm gonna eat or just decorative crops. But one, one thing I learned working here in Newark is we have a lot of talented people who are very good at um, growing food. Um, but we also have, so many other needs um, in the in the system, and like Tobias mentioned, it's a community system. But what does that mean? It means we need people who are um, systems thinkers, uh, people who can um, uh, work on like things like buying and selling food from other farms, marketing, uh, creating products, um, transportation. Um, computer systems and software and uh, apps and other things that make the exchange of food um, more, um, uh, more, more uh, uh, simpler to do and more direct. Um, people who can grow with technology, there's a whole um, uh, movement now of indoor growing with hydroponic systems that are uh, climate controlled. And um, some people, uh, frankly believe that uh, farming in the future, especially with climate change and changing temperatures and changing amounts of rainfall, that a lot of our farming will be done inside um, hydroponic uh, indoor facilities. So I just mentioned all that to say that when you're thinking about agriculture in the future and you're thinking about it as a uh, maybe a possible career path, you can be someone who's interested in technology or arts or marketing or branding or just business in general, you don't have to be uh, thinking about just um, having your hands in the soil and being the actual producer, uh, far from it in today's world. And let me show you an example of that actually as uh, composting entrepreneurs. Okay. So Tobias, you may, you may be aware a little bit, but um, my co-founder, uh, Jamie and I, uh, a few years before we started the Urban Ag Co-op, we got very interested in composting and particularly in how do you take food waste from the city that is producing way too much food waste and we don't even know what to do with it. We're putting it in landfills, we're incinerating it in this big um, uh, burner that's in, in Newark as well and causes very significant air pollution. What, do we, what can we do with all this food waste? And, and we know uh, from agriculture and from, uh, from ancient traditions and permaculture traditions that you can turn food waste and, and manage the uh, decomposition of it 
um, into soil amendments and improve the health of your soil. And in urban settings, when we had where we have such a waste problem and such a such a trash problem, this became uh, a very intriguing thing for us. Like how how can we create a system where more businesses and residents are getting rid of their food waste uh, in more productive ways and turning it into healthy soil? Um, so we started um, some workshops on this, just teaching students, like you see here, uh, about um, how food waste breaks down into the soil and why it's so important. Um, and then we started looking more globally at um, uh, the sustainable development goals of the UN um, on some, and also at some national organizations here in the United States, um, the New Jersey Composting Council, which is part of the US Composting Council, trying to get every state to reduce its food waste, both from the farmers, because farmers themselves waste a lot of the food. It doesn't get to uh, markets successfully. It spoils or it can't be harvested. Um, and then you have the food waste that's in the distribution supply chain. So um, big distributors as well as grocers uh, lose a lot of the food along the way, or it goes bad or it doesn't sell. Um, and then you have the consumers. We have all of us. Um, we, we, in America here, we, we buy too much food. <laughs> a lot of it goes to waste. Um, uh, we, we make food waste when we're cooking and we, uh, we chop off uh, pieces of the vegetables or meat or fruits or whatever that we, that we can't, um, that we're not going to eat. Um, if that, all of that kind of food waste ends up in our trash, uh, stream, it leads to pollution. If it instead is separated out and goes into composting systems, uh, it leads to healthy soils and reducing our um, carbon impact. Um, so we started to talk to schools and small businesses and small farmers about um, this as a service. And we worked with a few cafes um, and a few um, uh, schools, and we started um, asking for them for a small fee for transportation and for our time to pick up their food scraps and dispose of them for them. Uh, let's see here. So this led us in a bunch of directions. We uh, took the food waste and we put it in traditional piles and buried it with wood chips and, and other uh, carbon sources. And we learned how to compost at one of our community gardens. And then we learned about systems uh, of worm composting or vermiculture where you can create bins with earthworms and have them break down the food. And then the, uh, the, worm, the worm waste that they leave behind is a nutritious uh, fertilizer. And then we thought about things like, okay, after we break down the food waste and we make um, uh, vermicompost or regular compost, could we think about selling it um, as a product? And we learned about companies that are doing all of this, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, we also, uh, we were small, we were a small team and we ran into some, uh, some barriers that forced us to you know, not pursue that as a business. But what we did recently is we partnered with um, a small business, um, and my friends Java and Michelle, you see Java pictured there, who are experimenting with a pickup service of their own. And they've actually grown it over the last few years into a pretty, pretty large pickup service where they go to people's homes and they pick up a, a bucket of their food waste and they charge them a fee for that service. Uh, they take all of that food waste to either bins like you see there, which is called a, an ASP or aerated static pile system, um, or they take it to a large farm um, where they have a partnership um, to, to put it in, in huge piles, mix it with other farm uh, waste and wood chips and uh, break it down into soil there. And this is, uh, uh, I'm gonna go into this uh, slide here to show you about the aerated static pile. But um, needless to say, if you can imagine all of this food waste coming from different homes, businesses, um, and eventually from even bigger organizations like schools or hospitals, universities, if you could take all of their food waste, um, you can generate a business from uh, the service of picking it up and processing it for them. Um, here we have uh, a little bit of detail on this aerated static pile system, which I think is one that can be built in any city. Uh, it can be built in a, in a very small space. Um, this is about uh, 15 feet or um, you know, uh, uh, four meters long by, four, by, by a meter high. 
this system uh, pumps air into the compost, into the food waste, um, and keeps it contained so no animals can get inside. And very quickly, within a matter of one or two months, uh, can break it down into the material that you see there, which is ready for garden use uh, or farm use. Um, you can power this system with solar if you'd like, because it runs on a very small air pump. Um, Java's system here is also incorporating things like um, uh, some, some animal waste. So you can use chicken manure. You know, you could use a little bit of cow manure. You can use yard waste like uh, grass clippings or, or trees that are chopped up. Um, and you can use all of the uh, kitchen waste that, that uh, you can collect. Um, it uses, a, it's just a wooden system in this case. It uses uh, wooden panels on the front that you can remove to access the compost. Uh, there's a thermometer inside to, to let you know that the bacteria are actually uh, heating up and, um, and processing the waste. You, you want to reach high temperatures uh, inside so that, um, so that the decomposition is happening, qu happening quickly. Um, and it has a lid that's lockable to keep, uh, keep animals out. There's a picture of some finished compost from a larger facility here in New Jersey. Um, you can order from them. Uh, in large quantities for your farm or garden, but it gives you an idea of if you became a food waste and compost entrepreneur and you were successfully setting up a facility, um, you can create beautiful soil for farming. And it, it actually is a, a, a great resource. You, you know, it can be sold, it, it, it gets a high price. Um, farmers that are thinking about growing organically uh, or sustainably, um, will uh, really, really value this compost and understand the importance of this healthy soil. Um, and uh, so that's, that's a business opportunity in an urban area that I think um, all, all around the world in, in, in areas where there's more and more people moving to cities, it's something to think about. Um, we had to do some advocacy. This is, I won't get into this in great detail, but here in New Jersey, there was a lot of laws that made it very difficult for us to collect the food waste. So we've been working with the uh, local um, uh, New Jersey De Department of Environmental Protection and trying to get a petition to change some of these rules and say that if you're composting at a small scale at a community garden, you shouldn't have to be uh, paying a lot of fees or um, subject to a lot of inspections and difficult, uh, difficult legal work. Um, you should just be able to compost at a small scale. That being said, we are very much an advocate for safety and training and knowing how to compost correctly to avoid um, uh, uh, piles that create uh, odors or attract a lot of vermin and rats. Um, you really need to know what you're doing to, to mitigate those problems. Um, but it's definitely something that can be done in, in urban areas and rural areas as well. So we offered some workshops on this. Um, we've been doing some training and outreach around the community, and we're hoping that this year we can um, do more uh, uh, now that the DEP is, is starting to change some of its rules. Um, we're hoping that we can start um, collecting more of the food waste from our local neighbors and showing people in workshops uh, how they can reduce their household waste and, and turn it into uh, soil. Um, lastly, I'll just say that, you know, I'll just reinforce that this is a, a community effort. So there's so many ways for people to get involved. And I think Tobias can tell you also that we, um, we all started out on our small garden projects, maybe uh, imagining that we were, um, uh, you know, doing something unique or special. And, and we are, but we also um, yeah, realized the importance of making friends very quickly. And there are uh, over, over, uh, over 20 community gardens um, that are producing just here in our small city alone. Uh, there are many more people who want to produce food or compost or other related uh, educational projects. Um, and we found the value in putting people together into a network um, very quickly. And over, I think over the last few years, all of our work has um, uh, uh, improved and has uh, created a lot more effect because we're able to uh, work in collaboration. And it's something that I strongly encourage. You, and again, I, you know, here in the United States, for example, um, there's a long history of farmers um, sometimes thinking that you know, their own farm is their own business, their own family is 
you know, focused on one, uh, one operation um, and, you know, uh, growing your food and selling it. And the, the ones that are more successful are the farmers who think of themselves as, well, what about all these farms down the, down the road for me? What about all these other people who can work in this food system? And can I be effective at collaborating and organizing people together so that we all can benefit? When you start thinking like that, uh, and get you out of your isolated thinking of just what am I doing on my farm and how can I sell my fruits or vegetables, um, you start to realize that you're part of a business network um, that has a lot of potential um, to get both, you know, uh, mo more, more customers, more help from the government to invest in your farms, um, and, uh, and just more, more reach and more impact overall. So I'll stop there. And uh, Tobias, I don't know if you want to ask any uh, specific follow-up well, questions or. I don't have any specific questions, but um, one, uh, I just learned a new uh, phrase, uh, business networking. <laughs> um, add that to my uh, community farming uh, repertoire. <laughs> um, also, um, the composting uh, you would uh, see as a very uh, simple solution, especially for those who are heavily engaged or interested in organic agriculture. Um, but it can be, when you're doing this within cities, it can be uh, a challenging uh, solution. Uh, but those uh, who are in rural or um, areas or in the countryside may find it uh, a little more um, accessible and easier uh, to manage because they have the open space. Um, and they have uh, the ability to use raw organic materials to make uh, large piles of enriched soil. Um, and so definitely, uh, and, and also to your point, uh, so I definitely see composting uh, as a uh, great pathway to some entrepreneurial opportunities. Um, but to your point about not having to be necessarily a farmer to be a part of this business network of agriculture. Um, so my educational background uh, does not include uh, farming or agriculture. My educational background consists of creative writing, filmmaking, book publishing. I'm also a photographer, um, but, um, uh, but I, felt, I fell in love with the whole idea that you can uh, produce your own food where you are. And so that inspired me to get involved and learn more. And as I got to learn more, I started to realize my strength uh, falls more into um, uh, operations, management operations, and, um, and, uh, and also, you know, with the whole um, mention of social media, uh, that just became uh, a natural tool giving my background in, in filmmaking and being a photographer and so forth. And so to your point, um, uh, it's very interesting um, to know that this new paradigm that, we've, uh, that we are all in and helping to create uh, of community farming um, open up the doors for more people to get heavily involved and engaged in without necessarily having to get their hands dirty, so to speak. You know, and so you can get into technology, you can get into data management, you can get into um, uh, marketing and sales, uh, community engagement, programming. We do a lot of programs, you know, um, as a way to connect people with where food uh, is, um, is locally grown. And so to your point, this is all great. And I can't thank you enough for helping, uh, helping um, our friends in Africa Hopefully they can see this visually, but you will get to meet them again soon uh, to answer any, any of their questions. So if there's anything else you would like to share uh, with our friends in Uganda, please feel free to do so. No, I just uh, thank you for the opportunity. I, I hope that I had the opportunity to learn um, from, from you all as well. Um, before we started the conversation today, Tobias and I were talking about some of our, our travels around uh, Latin America and, and different parts of the world. And we always say that um, it, you, you just learn, you learn so much by traveling, by being in a new place, not only from the people, but just reflecting on your own life 
by being separate from it <laughs> for a short time. So I would love to hear about some of the specific questions or challenges or um, uh, trends and things that are happening uh, in Uganda, either in either in the cities or rural communities, um, and how um, local agriculture and local food systems can be uh, be part of that that development. Um, um, and and I do know a little bit about what's happening in different different parts of the world with agriculture, but um, you know the the little the little details and the the way people feel about it and the goals that people have um, are unique in every situation. So um, look forward to. Uh, to more follow up uh, from this fellowship. Awesome, awesome. So we will follow up very soon. Um, and I, I hope that uh, you uh, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, the rest of your month and the entire year. I can't thank you enough for taking out the time to uh, share your experience thus far with agriculture and looking forward to reconnecting with you with our friends in Uganda very soon. All right. God bless everybody. Peace.